Hi there. Welcome to the Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation channel. As you can see by the thumbnail, I'm going to interpret one of Sister Donna's dreams that she had. And it's called the Tree of Lights and the Father of Lights. And I purposely chose to um, do this dream or to post this dream because of just the way Father has really impressed it upon my spirit through various conversations, other dreams that I had to interpret, just the importance of the, the deception that will increase um, like never before and together with that the persecution. So um, I, I do believe that this uh, uh, the, as well as the next post that I'm going to do, uh, another interpretation of one of her dreams, holds hands with, with what Father wants me to teach on later as well. I'm going to do a short devotional on that with regards to the gifts of the Spirit. And um, it's truly a warning that we need to take heed of because the deception that's going to come is going to be, it's going to make all the other deceptions beforehand look like small fry because it's going to be on a complete different level. And if we do not know what we need to look out for and what disposition needs to be in our hearts, then we can easily fall prey. And um, the word says that, you know, um, if you think you stand, that is the moment that you will fall. So pride comes before a fall. So we need to be alert and be aware. So these are two warnings that Father is giving. And then I will be teaching on it a bit as well with what Father has shown me. Okay, so let's start with just with her dream. Just uh, reading her dream um, so that you can just get a refresher of, of what she dreamt. It's quite involved. So just try and consider the subject at hand and just keep track with what Father is revealing through this. Okay, so her dream, she tells, first of all, she says that she's had this dream over the years, she's had it three times. So when you get that father gives you the same dream over and over and over, it's almost, it, it, it's, it's like underscoring it, saying, you better listen to what I'm saying, this is very important, you can bet your bottom dollar, this is going to happen. Okay, it's the same as where the word says, verily, verily, when Yeshua said, verily, verily. Um, it, that comes from uh, Strong's G281. It means aiming. It means firm. It means truthfully, assuredly. So you can know that this will happen. Okay. So let's just read her dream that she had. <clears throat> okay. I am walking in a house and I hear my brother Larry calling me. And every time I go into the room, the lights go on. He asks me questions about the Word of God, and every time I give him an answer. I leave the room, and he keeps calling me, and each time I go into the room, the lights go on. The fifth time of going into the room, and the lights going on again, I am now growing tired of Brother Larry. It's the fifth time that I am revealing something to him about the Word of God. So I leave the room, and I meet a friend of mine, Henry. I used to go to church with Henry in the 70s when I first started going to church. Brother Henry tells me to go get out of the house because they do not want me in this house. He says, they want you out. You have to leave. I say, number one, don't no one tell me i got to leave. I go when the Holy Spirit of God tells me to go and only then will I go. I then walk through the house and I'm aware of a spirit in this house that I cannot see. It grabs me and I can feel it. It is lifting me up in this house. It wants to put fear in me, but I do not allow fear in. I feel myself growing stronger and the spirit is, that is holding me is weakening. It does not throw me down on the floor. But it sets me down on the floor, on my feet. I leave and as I walk out, there is a lot of people looking at a tree. The tree is burning with fire. I am amazed by this tree. The fire is not consuming the leaves. There is a man beside me. He asks, are you amazed, Donna? I say, 
I have never seen a tree on fire before and not be consumed by the fire. He says, greater things than this shall you see, Donna. I'm walking with him, but nobody can see him, only me. We are walking on the sidewalk. I then see a house that is opposite the street that is three stories high. I hear a lot of screaming coming from this house. I know that they are suffering and are in torment. He says to me, you are going to go over to that house. I say, no, I'm not. He says, yes, you will go over there and tell them what you know. The next moment, I'm on the other side of the street and then inside this house. I hear screaming and fighting on the first floor. I preach the gospel to them and there is calmness and peace on that level. Then I go up the stairs. The stairs are wobbling, moving and shaking, almost as if it wants to stop me from going up. There is torment on the second floor, just chaos. I preach the word of God to everyone on the second level and once again there is calmness and peace. Then I go up the stairs to the third floor and now the stairs are really wobbling, shaking violently to get me off. On the third level the people are running to get away from me. They are trying to jump out of the window. I say, really? You would rather jump out of a three-story building than listen to me? I start preaching and there is just chaos everywhere. People are rolling on the floor, throwing themselves against the wall, trying to get away from me. I say, really? You would rather hurt yourself than listen to me, what I have to tell you? Really? I preach anyway. And even though nobody wants to hear me, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Finally, there is calmness and peace on the third floor. I go down the stairs that are no longer wobbling and shaking. I am now walking freely down the stairs. I go outside and the man in white is waiting for me. I follow him. We come to a garden and I see hedges around the garden. I then see a priest standing at the opening of the garden. And there is a long line of people waiting to get into this garden. He wants me to go in first. He says, hello Donna, welcome to my garden. He has on his priestly garments. We go in and I wonder why did the priest not see the man standing next to me in white. He just said hello Donna. He did not say anything to him. And the people in the line could not see him either. I am wondering why. Why could the priest and the people not see the man in white? We walk into the garden to a tree that is burning with fire. I am not amazed by this tree that I'm looking at. We keep going and along this path are trees on each side of the path. We walk past the tree along this, trees along this path and the man the priest points to the trees. I am not impressed by these trees nor by the tree that was on fire. He says, I'm going to lead you to the tree of lights. At the end of the road, he says, behold the tree of light. Donna here saw the angel Gabriel come down from heaven with the tree of light and planted it. I say to the priest and the people, that's not true. I never saw that. You are a liar. That is not true. I tell the people, he's a liar. And that tree is not the tree of light. Follow me. I know the way to the tree of lights because my father gives to the tree of lights. And I know the way. Follow me. My father is the father of lights and I know the way. Quite a dream. Okay. Here with the interpretation. A summary first. This dream is about the coming deception of the false prophets and apostles and the church 
it will be deceived by the manifestations of false gifts within the church. Your dream is divided in four sections. Number one, the room where the light keeps coming on each time you enter, the burning bush that amazes you, the three-story building, and then the garden experiences. So let's start with the room where the light goes on. This house represents the house of God or the church. Brother Larry is calling you to expound on the word. You entering the room and the light going on speaks of the fact that you have understanding of the word. So the moment you walk in, understanding is given to you to, for you to reveal the word of God. Psalm 119 says that the entrance of your word gives understanding and light unto the simple. Now Larry's name comes from the word Laurentum. This holds great significance because it was a city south of Rome known for its laurel trees. So remember, I'm mentioning Rome here for a specific purpose. So they were known for their laurel trees. Here you can already see how this holds hands with the garden episode of the trees you were not impressed with along the road. Laurel leaves were used to make crowns for those who participated in the Olympics which Peter and Paul said was the crown that fades and that we are running our race for a crown that never fades. That's in 1 Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. 1 Corinthians 9, 25, here Paul says, And every man striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible so Brother Larry represents those who hear the word but are unable to receive the word because their understanding is veiled. You have to keep coming back but to no avail. The fifth time speaks of the grace extended because the number five means grace. The number five also points to the first five, five books of the word of God as well as the five-fold ministry that has a shepherding function to teach the flock. Okay, so with regard to these trees or brother Larry's, the following scripture is applicable. So remember I mentioned Rome, that they were running for these laurel leaves. All right, here. Yeah? We're going to read 2 Timothy 3, but I'm just, I just wrote here before this. Please note that the description of the first few verses is actually describing the false shepherds. You will also note that this description is almost identical to the description to the first chapter of the book of Romans, describing the church of Rome, of which Larry is a type and shadow. This would be during the time that the Antichrist and the false prophet's appearance is made on the scene during the Great Tribulation. So let's read 2 Timothy 3 just to see how these shepherds are. And if you go to uh, the first chapter of um, Romans, then you will see how the church is. Yeah, basically the same. Verse 1. This know also that in the last days per perilous times will come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Let me read that again. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. This verse 2 Timothy 3 verse 6 is very important with regards to the next 
interpretation of the next dream I will do, the next video. So I'm going to read it again. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Yannis and Yambres withstood Moses, Moses a type and shadow, apostle, fivefold ministry, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Romans 1, they are given over to a reprobate mind. In other words, like priest, so also the people. The women led away with divers lusts do not only symbolize women in general, but the backslidden church or the adulterous church as well. Then you meet Brother Henry. Now Henry's name means home leader. The word leader here has to do with power. Henry is the one cautioning you to leave because of the persecution that will take place of which the word of God says that brother will turn against sister and sister against brother and the children will give their parents over to the authorities, etc. You mentioned that you went with brother Henry to the church in the 70s. Strong's G70 means sleeplessness, watching, a state of being awake, to watch, staying watchful without the necessary time off, which is also G69. So there's no coincidence here that Brother Henry is meeting her, telling her to, to, to watch, be careful. So Brother Henry represents the Holy Spirit, your friend, who has cautioned you to come out of her. However, you resist and say that you will leave only when God tells you to leave and not anyone else. A bit on this later. There's almost what one can call an interjection now between the scenes with regard to the spirit that you cannot see that attacks you. He is very real to you and the fight is on. He wants to stop you and he does this by grabbing you and lifting you up. A display of his strength, if you will, in order to install fear in you. However, you do not succumb to this fear and the spirit is then weakened. Pl placing you on your feet instead of throwing you on the ground shows that fear has now entered him. They fear Christ in us. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have overcome in this warfare. So this part where the spirit is attacking her is actually talking about warfare. Number two, the burning bush that amazes you. <clears throat> Outside you find a burning bush and a man is standing next to you in white. Nobody can see him, only you. The man is your guardian angel that gives you instructions. Right through the dream, he speaks very little and mostly of the time he's giving you instructions. I've noticed in your dreams that when you are aware that someone appearing to you is the Lord, you exclaim, my Lord. However, not once do you address this man in white as my Lord. You are amazed at this burning bush that symbolizes the outpouring of the Spirit on his trees, those chosen to go out to preach the word of God. That's what that tree means that's burning. You are amazed because you recognize the real deal, as opposed to the tree in the garden, also on fire, which you were not impressed with. You are told that you will see greater things, pointing to Yeshua, saying the following to Nathaniel. That's in John 1 verse 50. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. Believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Note, this is not the same as where Yeshua told his disciples that they would do greater things. Here Nathaniel was told that he will see greater things. And so will you as well, Donna. Seeing is related to revelation, not only with regard to scripture, but seeing in the spirit. You alone could see the man next to you. Okay, so now we're going to number three, the three-story building. Once again, you're now at a house, the same way your dream started with a house and trying to bring revelation to Brother Larry about the word of God. 
where you were told to leave the house where Larry was in, you are now told to go into the three-story building. This three-story building is you seeing in the spirit what was actually taking place when you, when you went to Brother Larry, representing the reprobate church, unable to receive the revelation of the word of God. Seeing and hearing in the spirit the true condition of the church horrifies you and you do not want to enter. This shows that reality, which is that of the spirit, causes us to see things as they truly are and it's never easy. However, the spirit caused you to enter because ultimately he knows you will go wherever he sends you. There is progression taking place with each story in this house. The first floor represents the spiritual state on ground level, the congregation, if you will. The spiritual decay and wickedness increase with every level. On the first floor, they are screaming and fighting and the ability to get through to them with preaching is relative easier than the other floors. The second floor represents the spiritual state of the church, but pointing to those that are in a leadership position. They are higher up and therefore represent greater resistance. Here they are in chaos as opposed to the fighting and screaming on the first floor. Calmness comes as you preach the word of God. Now on the third floor, you find the spiritual state of the shepherds. You are a real threat to them. And they want to, now shepherds in inverted brackets, you are a real threat to them and they want to do whatever it takes to get away from you. They represent the frustration you felt with brother Larry when you came to him the fifth time, no longer having any grace left and choosing to not cut them any slack, preaching the word whether they want to hear it or not. Twice you confront them with the word, really, showing your frustration with their resistance, as was the case with Larry the fifth time. So the part where she goes into the house the first time is what was happening in the physical realm. The three-story building is showing what was happening in the spiritual realm. The stairs that are wobbling and trying to shake you off Represent that which happened in the spirit as our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers and wickedness in the air. The stairs speak of transition from one floor to the other and you cannot enter the next floor unless you have dealt with every staircase in between. Always a wall before entering the next floor. The wall every time greater. This points to the spirit that grabbed you in the house and lifted you up. The staircase makes me think of a snake's movement in the way, in a way. Either way, every time you do warfare on the stairs, you are confronted to deal with fear. And once fear is overcome, you are set on your feet to go to the next story of the building. Now we're going to go to the garden experience number four. You are guided to a garden where you find a priest standing at the entry of the, with a long line of people that want to enter as well. The priest, together with the people, do not see the man in white standing next to you. This is because they are veiled to the truth and are deceived. The priest represents the false prophet that will lead many astray during the great tribulation. He is the hireling that will lead his sheep astray those who do not know his voice, written about in John 10. The garden represents the church in the last days, particularly in the beginning of the tribulation, and about beginning to mid seals. Once again, you see a tree burning, but this time you are not impressed. This burning tree, in contrast with the burning tree that you were amazed with in the beginning of your dream, represents the false revivals with their false miracles, and gifts that will deceive many. It stands to reason where there is the true thing, one can always expect the enemy to produce a counterfeit. Many will be drawn to go into this garden and stand long lines waiting to enter. 
Revelation 13 from verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. As he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell thereon to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Verse 14, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. The trees along the way on either side represent man once again. When Yeshua healed the blind man, he said he saw men walking as trees. These trees represent those false prophets and false apostles that will lead many to the tree of lights. This priest, representing the beast that is as an angel of light, then proceeds to lie and say that you saw the angel Gabriel and planted the tree of lights. This is trying to awaken pride in you, to lift you up and place the focus on you. However, you call him out on this lie, having eyes to see with whom you are dealing with, and admonish the people that this man is a liar and that you know the way to the tree of lights. This will be the responsibility of those righteous trees of God, his true priests, prophets, and apostles. The tree of lights represents the Father who gives us good gifts to minister to his church. He is the tree of lights and nobody planted him. James 1 verse 70 Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning. In conclusion, your dream is about the coming deception of the false prophets, prophet that will deceive the church with false gifts and they will be drawn away by their lusts and ever learn but never come to the knowledge of the truth. Many will say that they saw angels, miracles will happen, great signs and miracles to deceive those waiting in line. They will enter the wrong garden and serve the gifts rather than the giver of the good gifts, the father of light. It will not be an easy time to proclaim the word of God for many people's hearts will grow cold and the warfare will be very real in this time as people are drawn away by the lusts of their heart. Amen. So this is a very sound warning for us not to be drawn away by miracles, signs and wonders. Yeshua said it is a wicked generation that seeks signs and wonders. It's a wicked generation because our hearts are then turned away from him to these signs and miracles. Herein is a grave warning for us to remember in the time to come. So I'm going to do the next uh, 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 interpretation as well that I will post. And um, then we'll see the other side of the coin, which points more to the persecution as well, with regards to desiring the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Thank you.